Mr. President, if you are truly on the side of the poor, if you are serious about the welfare of the people, if you truly want the poor to breathe, as you have once said, then kill corruption and not Nigerians. <laughs> Fellow citizens, the rallying cry by which the Save Nigeria group galvanized Nigerians in January 2012 at Ghanifa Park or Jota was kill corruption on Nigerians. This was our cry when we made it evident that our fight was not against the removal of the first subsidy, but against the corruption in the system. This was our fight when, amid the threats to my life and family, right there at Ojota and live on national and international television, I called out by name those individual and corporate entities who had allegedly ravaged our nation. Mr. President, given the complexity of the Nigerian economy, we are not thoroughly convinced that your palliatives will be sufficient to question the effect of your policies on the Nigerian citizen. <laughs> what we do know, however, is that on May 29, 2023, you swore an oath to be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. May I remind you, Mr. President, that Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2, Subsection B of the Constitution states that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Therefore, in compliance with your oath of office and in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, our demand on you the current, and it's just current, the current occupant of the office of the president, our demand on you is the same demand that we made 11 years ago. Mr. President, kill corruption and non-Nigerians. West African states echo words to violate an ancient principle of diplomacy that is recognized even in the holy book that you must offer peace before declaring war by placing military invasion on the table from the very start before subsequently exploring diplomatic options with the coup plotters in the Republic of Niger, President Tinubu once again put the car before the horse, thus placing Nigeria and the subregion in a precarious situation. Truly, those that are loudest in their threats are weakest in the execution of them. Any foreign invasion to succeed in the long term the support of the locals is essential. From the spillover effect of subsidy removal to the effect of sanctions, local support for Nigeria and our leaders among Nigerians is at an all-time low. It is therefore counterintuitive to engage in what could be a protracted conflict. This more the Tinumbu led ECOWAS ought to have learned from the aftermath of America's invasion of Iraq in 2003. While we condemn the spate of coup d'etats in West Africa, we recognize that the situation calls for deep introspection on the part of African leaders and makes even more urgent the case for good governance. The call upon Nigeria at this time is not to so much to compel submission in the subregion through the force of might, but to command alignment through exemplary governance. Well, that's how we chose to begin uh, of the press today. When you talk about uh, talking uh, truth to power, that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I, I think uh, Tunde Bakari just said, Pastor Tunde Bakari said. Uh, it made headlines, uh, almost all the dailies carried it. Uh, in The Guardian, it was... Uh, Tinubu's reforms will fail without economic justice, ending corruption, uh, says Bakari. And you also find a headline in Daily Independence, which reads uh, that um, Tinubu has plunged Nigeria into chaos. And some of the things that were highlighted uh, by the pastor are the reasons he's saying that he has plunged Nigeria into chaos. Another headline said, uh, 66, uh, or 66 days 
of the APC administration and Nigeria has gone, gone down. Uh, that was according to Labour Party. But we are not concentrating on the Labour Party here. Ap apart from all the headlines that we have seen, this is like uh, the most explosive uh, that happened in uh, the... Uh, on the pulpit, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, if, if our pastors, if our clerics cannot speak truth to power, then who can? Exactly. Because everybody is, you know, uh, having a place of refuge, as it were. So the people are powerful enough. So let them talk, let them speak truth to power. And Tundibakari said that. But, you know. Yes. And uh, one of the things he said, one of the takeaways there, which is probably on the lips of almost all Nigerians is, kill corruption and not, not Nigerians. People, yeah. All right. And he also said, go after those who s looted the oil subsidy money. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting Nigerians to suffer the way we're suffering by the removal of the subsidy, mm -hmm. who are those who ate the subsidy money? Mm -hmm. And he was one of those. You know, we were saying, what happened in 2012? This president, who is now removing the subsidy mm -hmm. and who is saying subsidy has to go, it was a corruption, it was something that corrupt uh, Nigerians used to enrich themselves, few corrupt Nigerians used to enrich themselves. He was against it in 2012 when former president Jonathan, good luck Jonathan, mm -hmm. wanted to remove it. And Tunde Bakari was among those who occupied Nigeria then, mm -hmm. kicking against you know, the former president, Jonathan. And many Nigerians are already asking, where are those people mm. who occupied Nigeria then, who kicked against it? And he did say that even at that time, he mentioned some names mm. uh, of those people who probably are part of the cabal, which means that the list of these people is, is there. Of course, With it's the no people. secret. So, so wh how come these people are going scot-free and then Nigerians are the ones who are suffering, mm -hmm. bearing the brunt of what evil some people, some known people uh, committed? It's, it doesn't make sense to me. Did you not see that interview by a former, I think he was a former governor, who talked about how uh, his friend, him and his friends, they were all involved in... Mm -hmm. receiving the subsidy money. Yes, and he said it was too much. It was, it was, they were tired of eating money. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's, 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 not, it's an open secret, really. Anyone who has the um, political will to prosecute those who benefited from this corruption scandal, a uh, uh, failed subsidy scandal, would, has enough information, I believe, to do the needful. So it is, it is the Nigerian people that are now suffering for their crimes, people, the crimes of people that are known. Someone will use the common money, the common wealth, and get tired of, <laughs> of eating it, and you don't say anything. There's sometimes that they said that, oh, if we open our mouths to say some things and mention some names, we know the people who are, who are sponsoring Boko Haram. Till date, we've not seen that list. Then someone came out and said he influenced the wife to make some judgments in the court and in favor of some politicians. We heard it. We know him. We know his name. Nothing is being done about that. And we are saying we are fighting corruption. We are going to be a better country and all that. Political will goes beyond just pronouncements. I think uh, showing working, as we say in Nigeria, is what we need right now. Who are those people? Name and shame them. Even if you don't prosecute no, them. No, let's, no, no. Let it's the, not enough to shame. Let us, they let got us to know be prosecuted. Them. But we don't even know they them. They got to be prosecuted. If you're going to do anything about it, if, it's, if it's, there's going to be a deterrence, because corruption has become so endemic, so... Look, it's, it's destroyed everything about this country. And you even know. the continent. Because if yeah, I know, if I know, to shame anybody, if I know, you got to prosecute. If I know someone to show who, that you you mean business. If Otherwise, I know someone, those who are because look, so many people are in deeply into corruption in this country, mm -hmm. and that is why. <laughs> and look, corruption fights back and it fights dirty. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you're going to cleanse the step, if you just have to start by prosecuting. Mm. But you know, if I know the person who who did this to me and my family because everybody should take it personally because we are all suffering it. At least next time he's coming to stand for election, I will know what to say to him. Now we don't even know them. They could be among us. They could be people that we are saying are saints and then they are the ones that plunge Nigeria into this. 
So prosecution is there. Let us know them. Uh, so they could no, even say they could even say they could, say they, they could even say they're prosecuting them, but they will not name them. You know it happens sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so but we are. So first of all, let me know them, and then we'll the way, push. Let us inform our viewers that sorry, um, our guests will not be joining us on the press yeah. as we had earlier. You know, teased. Um, he's unavoidably absent. So it's me, Nyamgul, and you. So let's <laughs> let's let's. let's Let's judge you. Um, some who we already know mm. to be corrupt came out. They have either been elected, re-elected, mm. or appointed into public offices as we speak. Mm -hmm. It's not in my place to begin to mention their names. Mm. So I'm saying until prosecution takes place and we see it happening, nobody's going to take anything seriously in our so-called quest or fight against corruption. Well, what, what is even the prosecution that we're looking for? We know some ex-governors, for instance, that were prosecuted, taken to Kujie <laughs> prison, and then just given the pardon, and then cleared, cleared, of everything, cleared of everything. And now, tomorrow, they could become senators, they could become anything. Yeah. We know people who have, have been in court, some are still in court, but they're superintending over activities that influence our life, impact on our lives. We see a lot of them in the National Assembly. And that some we have know. gotten perpetual injunctions yes. not to be I, I, questioned, I, I arrested, really or know. investigated. I really don't know why the courts grant that. If you're innocent, then prove it. Why would you go to court and say, I'm getting a perpetual in, uh, um, injunction, and they grant it to you mm -hmm. until you die? And then nobody gets prosecuted because your, your child cannot inherit what you should have suffered. So I don't know why this is allowed. Maybe someday a lawyer will tell us something about it. But why would someone come to you and say, okay, they say I'm corrupt. Make them not investigate me. Doesn't that even tell you that that person could be guilty? We are a special breed of people. Oh, dear. Yeah, we are. And let, let, let's look at some of the headlines on The Guardian. Um, CBN's Fiscal Irresponsibility Act. <laughs> Fiscal Irresponsibility Act. That's how it's tagged. Investigator probes CBN staff, consultants, NIPS, and SPMC. Find details of that on page six. So much came out mm. recently about the CBN, the, the money they are owing uh, JP Morgan and mm. Goldman Sachs, and how much billions they spent on their own vehicles, and you know, a lot, a lot of um, mm. a lot of things going on in that. Yeah, I'm just trying to compare the pr uh, the, the money they spent on their vehicles and the one that the National Assembly right now, which is probing them, is mm. spending or is trying to spend like 110 billion or so. Uh, the Serap guy will be talking with us later mm -hmm. on that. We'll get so to much know. racket, <laughs> so much racket. Talk about the black market, the Buru de change, and yeah. all of that yeah. that goes on. Yeah, you'd be amazed how the dollars were being given and how they were being gotten in. And 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 look, a lot is going on. <laughs> there's just so much. So sometimes much. I think there's bliss in not knowing because sometimes when you know some of these things happening, it it just sets your mind on. I don't know. You you get so angry all the time. Okay, but at least something good on the headlines. Uh, Niger military succumb to dialogue. Say cool in Nigeria's interest. I don't, I don't want to talk about the second part, which says it's in Nigeria's interest, but I love the fact that they are now going to negotiate. Even though I know that maybe they'll say, okay, the president cannot come back, give us time for transition, blah, blah, blah. We'll now have the transition period. They will transit into uh, civilian government that someone else takes the reins of leadership, and the circle just goes on and on. Maybe 10 years later, another junta springs up. I don't know. But we should find permanent solutions, and dialogue should be the first thing. Like Bakare said, dialogue is the first thing. You don't, you don't declare war before you come back to say... No, that process, dialogue. we've gone past that stage now. Um, it's, 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 it's already... We've gone past that stage. The threat for law of, of war has already been, been given before the dialogues and, and so all of that. But I understand that the coupists are now uh, coming down and saying, okay, they are ready to discuss. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so, so um, yeah.
<laughs> what does no one any good? It does no one any good. And as Tunde Bakari has said, it calls for introspection. Let African leaders begin to think and begin to talk to themselves mm. about how they are carrying about the responsibility of leadership that's been given to them. Mm. Well, but um, sometimes we know that we vilify, we, we, we condemn when the military people come to take over. It is not right. Uh, people should select their own um, leaders and all that. Uh, but they throw up some things that even if they cannot act on, whoever is a civilian president should look at it. Because most times, our civilian presidents are such that they, they seem to be looking for validation from the West. And so they enslave us to the West so that the West can validate us or validate them as individuals. And we become slaves that we, did not, we, we should not be. So they raised one of those questions there, or one of those concerns that uh, Niger is unevenly yoked with France, mm -hmm. which, if you ask me, is true. How can a sovereign nation have a central bank in another country in another that country. regulates the kind of money they spend in so a country. So what level of how independent are they really? That is not independent. And this validation that some of our so-called leaders, you know, seek from the West, you begin to wonder why. How long will they suffer from this um, colonialism mentality? When would they, just as uh, the late Nathan Bob Marley mm. said, emancipate yourself from mental, mental slavery. slavery. When would they do that? Because w if you are not free, you, you are not free. Yeah. So I, 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 I don't free. know. Even us in Nigeria, we are part of the Commonwealth. I don't know how really that Commonwealth is beneficial to us uh, if we cannot stand on our own. Uh, UK, or rather, uh, Britain has a population of about 60 million. We have 200 million. The Over market 200. is here. The natural resources are here. What do they produce? What do they have? Natural resources and other things in UK. They don't have uh, that much, if they have at all. Everything comes from this commonwealth, including Nigeria. And we're, st we're looking at this, and we're seeing it. But we're not doing anything about it. We're not doing anything deliberately to remove ourselves from the shackles. So now... Anything that wants to happen in Nigeria, and we say, for instance, um, it didn't take up to two months or six months after Abacha made a pronouncement. He, was, he may not be a very good leader, but he said, this dependence on the West has become too much. It has to stop. He used the words, enough is enough. Mm. <laughs> a few, few months later, he ate an apple, as we mm, say. Mm, so... Mm. So anytime anybody wants to talk about the, the true independence of Africa, something happens. Thomas Sankara was a, at the vanguard of freedom for Africa. See what happened. You Mama go to Baman Gaddafi, the same thing. See what happened and all that. And we are allowing this. Is it that they are afraid of paying the supreme price or that they just want to be selfish because they are gaining and we are not gaining? Are we not the Nigerians? You know, I watched the Blood Diamond movie again. I don't know yeah. if you've seen yes, that movie. Yes, I watched it. Oh, that I movie reminds it. you of a lot of the realities that we we're talking about and we've mm. been talking about and questions about how we have led ourselves and uh, comparing um, the leadership that Africa has seen from their colonial masters and the leadership that Africans have seen governing themselves, leading their own affairs. Mm. And, and so many things... So many things are just just not so beautiful it's about a terrible the continent. Thing. It's and a terrible thing. When are we going to see that change? We don't know. Can I travel to South Africa without a visa? Can I travel to Congo? Don't can even mention to, South Africa. So South Africa. To, even within some of the countries in the West African sub-region, they will be looking at you, even though it is, it is legal to travel there without a visa and all that, but they'll still be looking at you somehow. They, you will be subjected to series of checks that you, you don't even know whether you're a foreigner or you're still a, 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 an ECOWAS member or something. And you can't find that within the UK, for instance. You, know, you can't find that within the EU, for instance. But Africans, we cannot travel. We cannot interact. We cannot trade. We cannot do anything as brothers and trust ourselves. It, it just doesn't make sense to me.
Okay, let's look at some other headlines on... Um, Daily Independence, for yeah. instance. And so we go to Daily Independence, and it leads with CBN Naira float may crash in a short while. Experts warn. Uh, the writers there say Nigeria not ripe to operate currency float and devaluation affecting productivity manufacturing. Mm. You know, when this Naira float was, the policy came up mm. back then, a few weeks ago, I, one of the first questions, because initially I didn't quite understand it, that's the truth, but one of the quest, first questions I asked was, is this going to add value to our currency or is it going to devalue it? That was the first question I asked because mm -hmm. for me that was important. Yeah. It will rub off on everything. Yeah. And sadly, this is what we're seeing. Mm. It's like removing subsidy from everything. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you, you were able to, to get it from the official window for less and black marketers were doing what they're doing, at least they were still seeing that if we take it too high, People may not patronize us. They could just decide to be patient enough to get it from the official window. Mm. Now there's nothing like that. Naira is angling towards 1,000 Naira per dollar. Naira and is on a free fall. Yes. So and it's scary. It has sold for nine something at least a few weeks ago or a few days ago even. And if it can be that close to 1,000, then before December, who knows what will happen? It's, they it's, keep it's, telling it's us scary, that, really, that the policy is good, uh, uh, removal of fuel subsidy is good, see what we are facing. Uh, the, the Naira float is good, see what we are facing. Did they not think it through? Now the experts are, are talking that it might crash. Were they consulted before the policy came on? Or a few people just sat together and said, we have to do this to show that we are hitting the ground running. Well, President Bola Tinubu is said to be an economist. And, and so I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. But do you, what do we do know is that... <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I know about accountants is that they're stingy. That's what he said so. about them generally. <laughs> I don't know anything else about them, but I do know that they're said to be stingy. Mm. But these economic reforms, we've been told those who are pro it are saying be patient, give it time, uh, eventually everything is going to balance out. Um, but some are just, the projections, some projections are just not looking Why good. And what we are feeling it? right now, those of us that are not economists that do not have any nyokomita, you know, <laughs> <laughs> where it's going to land in the near future. We are apprehensive a bit, we're worried because the cost of things are just hitting the roof. Everything is hitting the roof. You can't I mean, flight tickets, foreign flight tickets, I discussed that on Tuesday last week. It's about 1.5 to the UK. What is 1.5? Oh, it has gone up now. It's gone up. Okay. It's gone up to the US. It was 2.5, 2.4, like three weeks ago. I don't know how much it is right now. Although this is peak of summer, so usually the prices go higher, mm. but obviously influenced by the devaluation of our currency, and the, 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 the fact that the funds of foreign airlines are still trapped in this country, I don't know why. Matter of fact, I understand Nigeria has the highest, highest of mm. foreign airlines funds being trapped yeah. anywhere in if the world. If you go to Benin, for instance, to take that same flight, it will cost you like 300% uh, less or even 400% even less. Yeah, over 600%, the papers had it last week. Okay, less than what we are experiencing in, in the giant of Africa and all that. We are not economists, we need timelines. If you tell us that, okay, things are going to get better, give us a timeline and say, maybe in the next three months, or in the next four months, in the next even six months, we know how to plan. But this one, you just leave it, it's parousia now. Uh, you know, the second coming of Jesus Christ that has not happened till now. Everybody uh, is just still waiting. We, sh we shouldn't be left in the dark like that. So if the, the Naira will appreciate Even because of this Jesus policy. Even the Lord Jesus did not leave us in the dark. He told us the signs to see so, about his take on coming. So it can't even compare terrible. the two. It's just terrible. Nigerians, I understand that some Nigerians now have to go to Ghana, they travel to other states, yes. other you know, Africans, neighboring countries mm -hmm. to travel because it's cheaper to yes. travel from those countries A lot cheaper. than traveling from Nigeria. All right, so this thing you talked about, Aviation College, outreach over missing 4.750 billion Naira, two trainee um, helicopters. 
Yeah, it's just like the fuel, uh, fuel um, uh, subsidy that mm -hmm. they say people were taking and then we don't know the people. Yeah. How can two trainee helicopters just disappear? Okay, the rector... The, the, 4.750 yes. billion naira. Yes, that's the cost. Senators are querying the rector and uh, they are petitioning the National Assembly and uh, all that. But helicopters were duly auctioned. Those were the words of rector uh, of the college. So if they were duly auctioned, mm. where did the money go to? 4.750 billion. Billion, not million. Where did the money go money to? Money just a fly left, right, and center. If why did you know they near your side <laughs> or my side, eh? Oh God, I want to make heaven a beg. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make heaven. Okay, well that's the much you can take on of the press this Monday morning. We'll be right back to give you our first hot topic. Stay with us. It's the breakfast, the mindset edition on Plus TV Africa.